The Acts of the Apostles, often referred to simply as Acts, is the fifth book of the New Testament. It tells of the founding of the Christian Church and the spread of its message to the Roman Empire. Acts and the Gospel of Luke make up a two-part work. Luke Acts, by the same anonymous author, usually dated to around 8090, add. The first part, the Gospel of Luke, tells how God fulfilled his plan for the world's salvation through the life death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, the promised Messiah. Acts continues the story of Christianity in the first century, beginning with Jesus' ascension to heaven. The early chapters, set in Jerusalem, describe the day of Pentecost and the growth of the church in Jerusalem. Initially the Jews are receptive to the Christian message, but soon they turn against the followers of Jesus. Rejected by the Jews, under the guidance of the Apostle Peter, the message is taken to the Gentiles. The later chapters tell of Paul's conversion, his mission in Asia Minor and the Aegean, and finally his imprisonment in Rome, where, as the book ends, he awaits trial. Luke acts as an attempt to answer a theological problem, namely how the Messiah of the Jews came to have an overwhelmingly non-Jewish church. The answer it provides, and its central theme, is that the message of Christ was sent to the Gentiles because the Jews rejected it. Luke Acts can be also seen as a defense of the Jesus movement addressed to the Jews. The bulk of the speeches and sermons in Acts are addressed to Jewish audiences, with the Romans featuring as external arbiters on disputes concerning Jewish customs and law. On the one hand Luke portrays the Christians as a sect of the Jews and therefore entitled to legal protection as a recognized religion. On the other, Luke seems unclear as to the future God intends for Jews and Christians, celebrating the Jewishness of Jesus and his immediate followers while also stressing how the Jews had rejected God's promised Messiah. Composition and Setting Title, Unity of Luke Acts, Authorship and Date The title, Acts of the Apostles, was first used by Ioneus in the late 2nd century. It is not known whether this was an existing title or one invented by Ioneus. It does seem clear, however, that it was not given by the author. The Gospel of Luke and Acts make up a two-volume work which scholars call Luke Acts. Together they account for 27.5% of the New Testament, the largest contribution attributed to a single author, providing the framework for both the Church's liturgical calendar and the historical outline into which later generations have fitted their idea of the story of Jesus and the early Church. The author is not named in either volume, according to Church tradition dating from the 2nd century. He was the Luke named as a companion of the Apostle Paul in three of the letters attributed to Paul himself. This view is still sometimes advanced, but a critical consensus emphasizes the countless contradictions between the account in Acts and the authentic Pauline letters, with Paul's own statement that he remained unknown to Christians in Judea after that event. He admired Paul, but his theology was significantly different from Paul's on key points and he does not represent Paul's views accurately. He was educated, a man of means, probably urban, and someone who respected manual work. Although not a worker himself, this is significant because more highbrow writers of the time looked down on the artisans and small business people who made up the early church of Paul and were, presumably Luke's audience. The earliest possible date for the composition of Acts is set by the events with which it ends, Paul's imprisonment in Rome c. 63 CE, but an early date is now rarely put forward. The last possible date would be set by its first definite citation by another author. But there is no unanimity on this. Some scholars find echoes of Acts in a work from c. 95 CE called I Clement, while others see no indisputable citation until the middle of the second century. If Acts uses Josephus as a source, as has been proposed, then it must have been composed after 93 CE. It does not show any knowledge of Paul's letters a fact which also supports a late date, and the social situation it reflects is one in which the faithful need shepherds to protect them from heretical wolves, which again reflects a late date. 
Most experts therefore date it to around 8090 CE, although some suggest 90 to 110, and there is evidence that it was still being substantially revised well into the second century. Genre, sources and historicity of Acts Luke aligned his work, Luke Acts, to the narratives which many others had written, and described his own work as an orderly account. Acts, the second part, is widely thought of as a history, but it lacks exact analogies in Hellenistic or Jewish literature. The title, Acts of the Apostles, would seem to identify it with the genre telling of the deeds and achievements of great men but it was not the title given by the author. Luke seems to have taken as his model the works of two respected classical authors, Dionysius of Halicarnassus, who wrote a well-known history of Rome, and the Jewish historian Josephus, author of A History of the Jews. Like them, he anchors his history by dating the birth of the founder and like them he tells how the founder is born from God talked authoritatively, and appeared to witnesses after death before ascending to heaven. By and large the sources for Acts can only be guessed at, but Luke would have had access to the Septuagint, the Gospel of Mark and the collection of sayings of Jesus, called the Q source. He transposed a few incidents from Mark's Gospel to the time of the Apostles, for example, the material about clean and unclean foods in Mark chapter 7 is used in Acts chapter 10, and Mark's account of the accusation that Jesus has attacked the temple is used in a story about Stephen. There are also points of contact with 1 Peter, the letter to the Hebrews, and 1 Clement. Other sources can only be inferred from internal evidence, the traditional explanation of the three we passages, for example is that they represent eyewitness accounts. The search for such inferred sources was popular in the 19th century, but by the mid-20th it had largely been abandoned. Acts was read as a reliable history of the early church well into the post-Reformation era. By the 17th century, however, biblical scholars began to notice that it was incomplete and tendentious, its picture of a harmonious church is quite at odds with that given by Paul's letters, and it omits important events such as the deaths of both Peter and Paul. The mid-19th century scholar Ferdinand Bohr suggested that Luke had rewritten history to present a united Peter and Paul and advance a single orthodoxy against the Marcionites. Bohr continues to have enormous influence. But today there is less interest in determining Luke's historical accuracy than in understanding his theological program. Audience and authorial intent Luke was written to be read aloud to a group of Jesus followers gathered in a house to share the Lord's Supper. The author assumes an educated Greek-speaking audience but directs his attention to specifically Christian concerns rather than to the Greco-Roman world at large. He begins his gospel with a preface addressed to Theophilus, informing him of his intention to provide an ordered account of events which will lead his reader to certainty. He did not write in order to provide Theophilus with historical justification, did it happen, but to encourage faith, what happened, and what does it all mean. Acts is intended as a work of edification. Edification means the empirical demonstration that virtue is superior to vice, but is not all of Luke's purpose. He also engages with the question of a Christian's proper relationship with the Roman Empire, the civil power of the day. Could a Christian obey God and also Caesar? The answer is ambiguous. The Romans never move against Jesus or his followers unless provoked by the Jews. In the trial scenes the Christian missionaries are always cleared of charges of violating Roman laws. And Acts ends with Paul in Rome proclaiming the Christian message under Roman protection. At the same time, Luke makes clear that the Romans, like all earthly rulers, receive their authority from Satan, while Christ is ruler of the kingdom of God. Manuscripts There are two major textual variants of Luke Acts, the Western text type and the Alexandrian. The oldest complete Alexandrian manuscripts date from the 4th century and the oldest Western ones from the 6th, with fragments and citations going back to the 3rd. Western texts of Acts are 10% longer than Alexandrian texts. 
the additions tending to enhance the Jewish rejection of the Messiah and the role of the Holy Spirit, in ways that are stylistically different from the rest of Acts. These conflicts suggest that Luke Acts was still being substantially revised well into the second century. The majority of scholars prefer the Alexandrian text type over the Western as the more authentic, but this same argument would favor the Western over the Alexandrian for the Gospel of Luke, as in that case the Western version is the shorter. The debate therefore continues. Structure and Content Structure Acts has two key structural principles. The first is the geographic movement from Jerusalem, center of God's covenantal people the Jews, to Rome, center of the Gentile world. This structure reaches back to the author's preceding work, the Gospel of Luke, and is signaled by parallel scenes such as Paul's utterance in Acts chapter 19 verse 21, which echoes Jesus the words 951. The second key element is the roles of Peter and Paul, the first representing the Jewish Christian Church, the second the mission to the Gentiles. Transition Reprise of the preface addressed to Theophilus and the closing events of the Gospel. Petrine Christianity The Jewish Church from Jerusalem to Antioch 2 to 1 minus 8 to 1 beginnings in Jerusalem 8 to 2 minus 40 the church expands to Samaria and beyond 9 to 1 minus 31 conversion of Paul 932 to 1225 the conversion of Cornelius and the formation of the Antioch church Pauline Christianity the Gentile mission from Antioch to Rome 13 to 1 minus 14 to 28 the Gentile mission is promoted from Antioch 15 to 1 minus 35 the Gentile mission is confirmed in Jerusalem 1536 minus 28 to 31 the Gentile mission climaxing in Paul's passion story in Rome outline dedication to Theophilus resurrection appearances great commission ascension second coming prophecy Matthias replaced Judas the upper room. Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. See also Paraclete. Peter healed a crippled beggar. Peter's speech of the temple. Peter and John before the Sanhedrin resurrection of the dead. Believer's prayer. Everything is shared. Ananias and Sapphire. Signs and wonders. Apostles before the Sanhedrin. Seven Greeks appointed. St. Stephen before the Sanhedrin, the Cave of the Patriarchs, was located in Shechem. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. First mentioning of Saul in the Bible, Paul the Apostle confesses his part in the martyrdom of Stephen. Saul persecuted the Church of Jerusalem. Philip the Evangelist, Simon Magus, Ethiopian eunuch. Conversion of Paul the Apostle Paul the Apostle confesses his active part in the martyrdom of Stephen. Peter healed Aeneas and raised Tabitha from the dead. Conversion of Cornelius. Peter's vision of a sheet with animals. Church of Antioch founded term, Christian, first used. St. James the Great executed. Peter's rescue from prison. Death of Herod Agrippa I, in 44, the voice of a god, mission of Barnabas and Saul, Saul, who was also known as Paul, called gods, in human form, council of Jerusalem, Paul separated from Barnabas, second and third missions Areopagus sermon, God dot has set a day, trial before Gallio C, 51, 52, trip to Jerusalem, before the people and the Sanhedrin, before Felix Festus Herod Agrippa II, trip to Rome called a god on Malta. Content The Gospel of Luke began with a prologue addressed to Theophilus. Acts likewise opens with an address to Theophilus and refers to my earlier book. Almost certainly the Gospel. The apostles and other followers of Jesus meet and elect Matthias to replace Judas as a member of the Twelve. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descends and confers God's power on them, and Peter, along with John, preaches to many in Jerusalem, and performs Christ-like healings, casting out of evil spirits, and raising of the dead. At first many Jews follow Christ and are baptized, but the Christians begin to be increasingly persecuted by the the Jews. Stephen is arrested for blasphemy, and after a trial, is found guilty and stoned by the Jews. 
Stephen's death marks a major turning point. The Jews have rejected the message, and henceforth it will be taken to the Gentiles. The message is taken to the Samaritans, a people rejected by Jews, and to the Gentiles. Saul of Tarsus, one of the Jews who persecuted the Christians, is converted by a vision to become a follower of Christ. Peter, directed by a series of visions, preaches to Cornelius the centurion, a Gentile God-fearer, who becomes a follower of Christ. The Holy Spirit descends on Peter and Cornelius, thus confirming that the message of eternal life in Christ is for all mankind. The Gentile Church is established in Antioch, and here Christ's followers are first called Christians. The mission to the Gentiles is promoted from Antioch and confirmed at meeting in Jerusalem between Paul and the leadership of the Jerusalem Church. Paul spends the next few years traveling through Western Asia Minor and the Aegean, preaching, converting Gentiles, and founding new churches. On a visit to Jerusalem he is set on by a Jewish mob. Saved by the Roman commander, he is accused by the Jews of being a revolutionary, the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, and imprisoned. Paul asserts his right as a Roman citizen, to be tried in Rome and is sent by sea to Rome, where he spends another two years under house arrest, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts ends abruptly without recording the outcome of Paul's legal troubles. Theology. Prior to the 1950s, Luke Acts was seen as a historical work, written to defend Christianity before the Romans or Paul against his detractors. Since then, however, the tendency has been to see the work as primarily theological. Luke's theology is expressed primarily through his overarching plot, the way scenes themes and characters combine to construct his specific worldview. His salvation history stretches from the creation to the present time of his readers in three ages. First, the time of the law and the prophets, the period beginning with Genesis and ending with the appearance of John the Baptist. Second, the epoch of Jesus, in which the kingdom of God was preached, and finally the period of the church which began when the risen Christ was taken into heaven, and would end with his second coming. Luke acts as an attempt to answer a theological problem, namely how the Messiah promised to the Jews came to have an overwhelmingly non-Jewish church. The answer it provides, and its central theme, is that the message of Christ was sent to the Gentiles because the Jews rejected it. This theme is introduced at the opening of the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus, rejected in Nazareth, recalls that the prophets were rejected by Israel and accepted by Gentiles. At the end of the Gospel he commands his disciples to preach his message to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, he repeats the command in Acts, telling them to preach in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth they then proceed to do so, in the order outlined. First Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, then the entire world. For Luke, the Holy Spirit is the driving force behind the spread of the Christian message, and he places more emphasis on it than do any of the other evangelists. The Spirit is poured out at Pentecost on the first Samaritan and Gentile believers, and on disciples who had been baptized only by John the Baptist, each time as a sign of God's approval. The Holy Spirit represents God's power. Through it the disciples are given speech to convert thousands in Jerusalem, forming the first church.